tried to commit an act of terrorism. I would like to be a, a terrorist. Hamilton's car decides that it wants to be part of Putin's war utility. Verstappen's dominance has been put um, to, to sleep by Carlos Sainz yet again. And that's kind of good. Even if you're a Verstappen fan, surely you're kind of happy that you're seeing someone else win and that you're not hearing the Dutch anthem every week. Because that was getting a bit boring. Boring! Spanish anthem is the new Dutch anthem. Carlos Sainz said to his Ferrari mechanics, nah, screw weight saving on the car. I'm going to do some weight saving on my own. He got his appendix cut out. He's a bit lighter and that means that he's a bit faster and he won the race. Wow. Wow. <laughs> But anyway, with that said, Albert Park has always been one of the most or one of the best entertaining, best races for racing for literally everything there is to be good in Formula One. It's always been up there. And today, let's look at why that is. Why is Albert Park so, so good? Oh, God, it's so good. And why literally everybody likes it. Unless you're Hamilton, Russell, Verstappen and 2024. Let me know what you guys thought of the Australian Grand Prix down in the comments and whilst you're there you might as well just subscribe and like. I don't know why you wouldn't because as I say literally every video I have some crazy ideas for this channel and you really don't want to miss it because they're going to be cool as fuck. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. I mean starting off with the whole entertainment factor of the fans watching the race. That's why, you know, we wake up at 4am to be like, yeah, let's put on the, yeah, let's watch the race at 4am. Yeah, let's do that. That's fun, right? I mean, I did it, so, mm. This year in 2024, Verstappen's brake just exploded. George Russell tried to commit an act of terrorism. I would like to be a, a terrorist. But I guess he got flashbacks to Singapore and thought, hmm. Alonso gets given a 20 second time penalty for causing the act of terrorism caused by George Russell. Alex Albon nearly gets put into a spliff by one of the hasses into the wall. That was kind of dangerous, kind of scary, kind of sad that Albon didn't score any points. Hamilton's car decides that it wants to be part of Putin's war utility and explodes on itself. Just behind the wall. Well, there goes which was kind of unfortunate. Piastri thinks he's a lawnmower and Esteban Ocon is gleeing for joy after getting into Q2. All in one year. That's the mass amount of entertainment. Last year, the Alpines were 1v1 in WrestleMania and both kind of died. Charles Leclerc was facing the wrong direction in the gravel thinking he's Carlos Sainz. And Alex Albon thought it would be a good idea to commit suicide. Which was, you know, not good. And honestly, I could go on forever. Good racing here and there. And remember that time where both Haas cars didn't fit their wheels on properly. And fell apart mid-race. That was funny. Honestly, there's countless things that I could just name from literally every single year about how entertaining Albert Park is. But why is it so entertaining? What makes it entertaining? Well, I think it has to be, well, it generally is the track. And I guess where it is on the calendar. Because let's say we put it nearer the end of the calendar. Maybe the cars are more developed. The drivers are more at one with the car. Th this many mistakes maybe might not be happening. It's the mistakes that make it fun. Red flag, red flag, red flag. I'm in the middle of a track. It has 14 turns and just over five kilometers long. It's narrow in narrow part. It's got some good slow speed sections. It's got a lot of straights and a lot of DRS zones. So pretty much everything a track should need. The cars can, you know, go wheel to wheel in the slow sections, hairpins. The last sector's um, kind of iffy. And there's straights for days so that everyone can, you know, get their fair share of DRS, but some good, good work in going straight, literally doing nothing. <laughs> but there's a lot of straights, which is good because, you know, they can overtake. We all love overtaking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's up with the slow and twisty sections of the track. Well, they're not that slow, but you know, there's always some incidents going on, whether it's Verstappen 360ing in like 2017 or something. <laughs> Thinking he's going drifting, I don't know, or him being a lawnmower in 2022. <laughs> and then Piastri doing the same this year. There's always some shenanigans, always some contact, always some drama. Most corners you can go side by side in and you know, it's good if you both leave enough racing room. Because on some occasions, you know, some drivers just don't. They, they, they don't. Oh no! 
I'm not sure what about the asphalt or the temperature or the air or whatever happens, but there's always some kind of mechanical failures, even to the teams that, you know, you don't expect mechanical failures. Like Red Bull today, how are Red and Mercedes, how are both of them getting mechanical failures at Albert Park? And it's not just, you know, that. Same thing happened in 2022 for Red Bull. I know that Verstappen DNF'd and that's, that's all I really remember. It's also a street track, so the walls are going to be close, making, you know, it entertaining because, you know, if you go off, you're going to hit the wall like George Russell showed us this year. Like, I nearly flipped the car. That was interesting. What? Anyway, the walls are close, and it just provides us with good racing. There's enough width on the track and, you know, high-speed corners that it's possible to do everything you want to do at a normal racetrack. It's not like a Monaco where the walls might be close, but then there's no racing room whatsoever. Everything's slow speed. Baku, there's, you know, maybe a tiny bit too many straights, not enough corners for people to be... But Baku's a good track, you know? Albert Park is just like that big brother of tracks. The track that, you know, everyone looks up to. Hmm, I want to be like Albert Park. And that's what a track is meant to be. It's just perfect. It was perfect. Perfect. Over the years has had, you know, slight track changes from 2019 to 2022. Obviously helped a lot with racing, like... A lot. They got rid of a couple corners, made it more flowier, faster. Here and there, it's like, what, five seconds a lap faster now? And it's good changes. Back in the day, it was a great circuit because it was the opener. And, you know, the opener is always the most hype thing on the thing. Unless you're going to Abu Dhabi for, like, the last race in the championship battle. Or Brazil or whatever it was back in the day. The first race was always a banger and everyone, you know, it was just a good solid first track and next year it also is going to be the first track which makes it even more of a banger than it was this year last year the year before or whenever it was like you know 2009 that was a banging race banging race when braun won with the jensen butt and that was crazy like, what's up, danger? it's also a track that's dangerous enough that if the drivers you know as i said make any slight mistakes like daniel ricardo did in 2019 when he lost his front wing literally five meters into the race <laughs> by going onto the grass. Even that, you know, slight mistakes going off the track slightly. It's a big, 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 big consequence. There's many tracks today that, you know, you don't really have a consequence if you go off the track. Obviously, there's some where you do genuinely face the punishments, like Monaco. You really can't go off the track. I mean, yes, Leclerc managed to go off the track in 2018, but the second he went off the track, he slammed into a wall because of a brake failure. Or, you know, that thing where, oh, he's done a Rosberg moment. Australia provides a good balance between, you know, risk and reward. You want to go off the track, cut a corner? Well, you really can't because you're in the gravel. Some tracks, you know, they, they're they better at, you know, you can cut the corner slightly, track limits. Here, it's like you do something wrong and you're kind of dead. Like when Vettel, he slightly went over the track, bottomed out on the curb and was in the wall and, you know, he DNF'd after that. Alex Albon in 2023 tried to take, you know, one of those corners. I think it was like five kilometers or under five kilometers over what the tires would give or, you know, give in. And he was in the wall because of it. I don't know. It's just perfect. It might just literally change nothing about it. The pit lane is also short. It's, you know, you don't, you're not in the pits for five years. It's good. Anyway, that's enough of me glorifying this race circuit. Sad that P.S. didn't get a podium because that would have been a bit better, in my opinion. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. Like and subscribe. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and peace.